So our thematic section is about the beautiful game, football. Now I know Americans call uh, it soccer, but let's stick to the um, international term, football, spackballer. Now you'll notice I'm wearing a blue shirt. We all have our favorite teams and I have to support Everton. Now I know Everton's in the news recently um, for all kinds of reasons. Uh, I don't want to get into the controversy there. Um, but um, I had to be an Everton supporter. My uh, father was at school with Dixie Dean. Uh, Dixie Dean was one of the greatest all-time players, great striker, and he had a record of scoring 60 goals in a season, which was only fairly recently broken by Lionel Messi. Uh, he was a great player, very good with his head, and clean. He was never booked. Uh, great uh, icon, he's Everton's most famous player. Uh, in the city of Liverpool we do have this rivalry between uh, Everton in blue and um, the Toffees. Uh, the origin of the nickname is there was a sweet shop, a shop which sports, um, sold sweets, bonbon, peppermint near the, <coughs> near the ground and uh, that's what we call Toffees. Uh, Liverpool have various uh, names, the Coppites, if you like, and uh, I, I love Liverpool uh, Football Club, maybe not quite as much as Everton, but I do admire, say, the big, great Bill Shankly, Bob Paisley teams, you know, which dominated Europe, and even now uh, Jurgen Klopp uh, is, is a great manager, got a great team, and what I love, what I love about, into, uh, about Liverpool recently is they did uh, pay a tribute to Bill Kenwright. Now, you may have heard that about Bill Kenwright, who was the uh, Everton chairman for many years, but he was also an impresario. That means someone who puts on productions of plays and movies, and uh, he was he was great. Uh, he, he employed many creative people. A great guy. Loved rock and roll too. He actually read one of my poems out on his radio show, and when the Asian tsunami hit too. Um, Everton were the first club to respond with, with money and help and I did write to Bill Kenwright on behalf of Indonesia saying thank you. He said, anything Everton Football Club can do to help, we're ready to help. He was that kind of person. And um, there have been two great disasters fairly in the last, um, what, 50 years uh, in British football. There was the uh, Hessel disaster in uh, um, Brussels, but there was also the Hillsborough disaster. Now, in 1989, there was a terrible disaster at Hillsborough Stadium in Yorkshire, and um, Liverpool were playing in the uh, semi finals of the FA Cup, and there were crowds outside, so the, the Sheffield police opened the gates to let the crowds outside in and they, they surged in and crushed fans who uh, were already in um, in the stadium and it, it led to the deaths of 96, later 97, one died later, 96 Liverpool supporters. The terrible tragedy and the tabloid press some elements of the tabloid press um, really did something very disgusting and I'll say that and he wrote that the Liverpool fans were urinating on the dead bodies they were picking their pockets they weren't picking their pockets they were looking for identification there were no handphones in those days well it was not the Liverpool fans fault it was not, they didn't cause the, the Hillsborough disaster. It was called by the Sheffield police, uh, not acting very professionally. And also the Sheffield, so the Sheffield police came out denying, denying, denying it. But the families of the 96 kept on fighting, kept on fighting, supported by uh, not just Liverpool, but Everton. Everton were right behind uh, Liverpool and that. And they kept on fighting, they kept on fighting for justice, 
justice for the 96. And so uh, I'm going to take you to Two thousand and thirteen, uh, where uh, at Anfield Stadium, Liverpool Stadium, the Everton chairman Bill Kenwright made a very, very moving speech. So uh, now, just listen to the speech, please. say these few words I, I, I was worried on two levels one I've had the most emotional day of my life earlier this year actually nine months ago and I knew that this was going to be a really emotional one for me too to be honest with you I didn't really feel half of what I'm feeling now and my life will never be the same after today I promise you that one of those kids brought up in the late 40s and early 50s who lived in a soccer mad family but would go one week here and one week to the other place and I, I used to come and these were the days when a kid could play out uh, at night when you could go to see your team on your own and I was quite a small timid kid and I used to enter the cop there was an entrance there and there was a, a big stanchion here and the main reason I came to the cop to see Liverpool was because of my family because I loved my uncle Cyril immoderately and I just wanted to be him with him and his mates on a Saturday afternoon when Everton were playing away and there was this big stanchion here and if you if you stood a couple of inches on it you could see right up in the cop and my uncle always used to stand around about there and all he had to do was put his hand up like that and this little eight-year-old would see him and I would start my journey and I promise you I I wouldn't get a yard before someone would pick me up and I would be handled over heads until it's true until I found my uncle in the car and I've never forgotten that, and I've never forgotten the warmth of this amazing sight here. And two, two dates stick in my memory of when I was closest to Liverpool Football Club. One of them was when my all-time idol, Dave Hickson, joined you, and alongside 10,000 other Evertonians, on a December night in 1959, we came and watched you beat Aston Villa 2-1, and you worship Dave as we worship Dave. The other day, of course, was 24 years ago today when I was at Villa Park, not as a chairman, not even as a director, but as a fan. And I know you know all this, but from an Evertonian's point of view, that was an extraordinary day for us because that was a time when you really wanted to win a semi-final. It was probably more precious to you than getting to the final because it was in the days when the final was at Wembley and you got there. And that day, all of my mates and I gathered together afterwards as the news came trickling in, and it was a trickle, and we felt like we'd been relegated. We didn't feel like we just got to Wembley. The journey home was terrible, not nearly as terrible for what you go through, but we all knew people, had people. We all thought it could have been us. If those balls had come out of the bag differently, it, it could have been us. And it happened tragically to you. And I hope since that day you have known the support of Everton Football Club for you. I don't want to go on 
too much longer, but thank you. But like all of you, like all of you, I watched that Liverpool documentary a few weeks back, and of course the words Hillsborough, the words justice were mentioned all the time, but there were two words that were mentioned an awful lot and resonated to me hugely. And I think, to me, they're the two most important words in the English language. Certainly to people from Liverpool, they're the two most important words in the English language. The words were, me mum. And all of us here are lucky enough. Some of us have got our mums behind, beside us, but we've all got mums. And I saw your banner on Saturday at Reading saying, you've taken on the wrong city. Well, you've taken on the wrong mums too, because we all know about Liverpool mums and the way they fight for their kids and their family. And you mums here today, you mums here today, I know the pain. I don't know the pain because I'm not you, but I appreciate the pain that you would have felt on that day. But let me tell you, the 96 are here with you today as much as they've always been. And I hope by next year, the 25th anniversary, you'll be celebrating the greatest victory that any team in this country has ever had. Not just in football, but in life. Our manager David Moyes over there. We salute you. And if you ever want to come and have a service for them over at our place with some blues, the door's always open for you. God bless you. So, Bill Kenwright was not only a great man, he was a good man, and that is more important. And I think that speech brings out both his greatness and his goodness. Rest in peace, Bill. Hope we'll meet in, in football heaven, because you were one of a kind. Um, I think that was a fitting way to close our vlog about football but we'll just um, give you the seven vocabulary items of vocabulary to learn as usual so uh, ready okay. auxiliary auxiliary continuity continuity Eloquent, eloquent, equivalent, equivalent, impresario, impresario, that would be Italian originally. Peace of mind is a phrase, peace of mind. That's Little Richard's phrase there. And for those with appetites, shashlik. Right. So remember, we'll never walk alone. We never, we'll never walk alone. Thank you, Tatlan.